since I moved to the countryside, my life has just changed. I'm into opera now and I paint. Whenever I visited kitchen gardens, the taste of freshly picked peas was always quite mind-blowing as they taste so sweet. And although I'm new to growing my own food, I thought I'd try and grow them myself. It all started earlier this year in April when I decided to sow some pea seeds. I was inspired by a great Welsh gardener on YouTube called Hugh Richards to actually sow the seeds in some guttering. I filled the gutter in with rich compost, then sowed the pea seeds in rows of three all the way along. Then I lightly covered them with a little more compost. Only four weeks later, and it was time to plant them out next to a little trellis I built, as our seedlings were about six inches tall. The gutter method made it super easy to transfer the seedlings into the bed. All I had to do was give it a little shake and they slid right out. After a healthy watering, it was then just a waiting game. The shoots would climb and the peas would form. And maybe in a few months time, I could make something delicious with the peas. I don't know why I did that, but I'm very, very excited because as chefs, we love to cook with fresh, local, organic produce. It tastes better, you know exactly where it's come from, and you're just gonna get a better ingredient. And today, something that I planted back in April is now ready to harvest and actually cook with. And uh, for me, being a new newcomer to gardening, just seeing these results is just mind blowing and it really solidifies how actually simple it is to do. So let's go and pick some of uh, these snow peas, stroke mons too, and make a dish with it. First though, I need to taste them fresh off the uh, plant. This is crazy for me, honestly, I can't believe it. I'm just gonna pick one now. This is a nice juicy one and just snap it open. Look at that. And the good thing about these snow peas is that you can eat the casing and the peas inside, obviously. The flavor is just so sweet and fresh and just got this vibrancy that I haven't experienced before when eating peas because they are that fresh. Uh, so I'm gonna pick a good bunch of these and then get into the recipe. I haven't told you what I'm making yet, have I? So I know with runner beans, um, the more you pick, it encourages them to produce more. So I'm hoping that's the same with these peas because I'm going to pick quite a lot here. Mm -hmm. So this really makeshift trellis that I built, <laughs> you can tell I'm not like a builder or civil engineer because the structure of this is terrible. Uh, I reinforced it and gave the peas some more things to climb up by just sticking some sort of twigs in there and they like to climb up them actually so that was a, a little addition that I did. So let's get cooking. I'm going to use my beautiful homegrown peas to make a Thai style coconut curry. It's a very simple recipe and the paste that I make, the curry paste that I make, you make it once but it, there's enough there to make two maybe three curries with it so you can store it in the fridge and use it at a later time or even in stir fries. So there's a bit of effort at first for the first curry but then you know you've got that paste to hand. Or you could just cheat and buy a paste but it's so much better making it yourself. So what you need to do is first up into your blender, in my case I'm using my pestle and water, I'm going to add some ground cumin and some ground coriander, which I've just toasted in a dry pan. Then some garlic cloves, just peeled, four cloves in total, and some lemongrass, which I'm using fresh, and I'm just going to bash the woody part and then chop the greener part and get that into the pestle and water. As well as that, I'm also going to add a thumb-sized piece of ginger, just lightly chopped, the juice of half a lime, two chilies, I'm going to be using an orange and a green chili, and some ground turmeric. So 
So to help this blend up, or I mean crush up in my pestle and mortar, and at home if you're doing it, to help it blend up, add some sesame oil or a little bit of water to help it sort of blitz. But I am also going to be adding some soy sauce, or in my case I'm actually going to be using some ponzu. Uh, and this is basically lemon soy sauce. It's not as, um, not as salty and it's got a lovely zesty um, lemoniness to it I guess. So I'm going to add a bit of that to help it blitz or mash up in my pestle and water and some maple syrup for the sweetness. Looking outside is fun, isn't it, Tom? Okay, so I've got a bit of a pace going on here. I'm gonna add a pinch of salt, only a little because Obviously we've got that soy or the ponzu in there, we don't want too much saltiness. We can always adjust that when the curry's done. So it's time to get this curry cooking. I've got a red onion which I'm just going to quarter, get it sauteing in my pan, in my saucepan, and then once it's released all its sweetness and gone a little caramelised, I'll then add some of the paste. The rest of the paste I'll just store in my fridge uh, until I want to use it at a later date. Now this smells unbelievable. Tom, how good does this smell? Unbelievable. Good. All right, so I'm just gonna cook it for 30 more seconds. My, my outdoor cooking situation is either like a furnace or non-existent. So I'm just, just trying to work with it. Never fear the stove, as Michael Pierre White would say. Treat the stove like a piano. Move your pan around if you need to, to get a different heat. Oh, God. When I'm quoting Marco Pierre White, you know I'm, in, I'm enjoying my cooking. To glaze the pan with some vegetable stock. The aromatic fragrance right now, it, oh, it just smells unbelievable. I'm so happy to be in my homeland. By my vegetable patch, the sun beating down on me is beautiful. And it gets better because I'm gonna be serving this with some crumbled, sauteed chili coriander tempeh, which is really simple to put together. Obviously, we've got my lovely sugar snap peas, and uh, I'm gonna pick some more greens from my garden too to go inside this, as well as my buckwheat noodles that I pre-made. So let's get that tempeh made. First thing you need to do is just crush it with your hands, just break it up into small pieces. This can also be done with firm tofu. Light a non-stick pan and get it saute in. Once it's got a nice bit of color on it, I'm gonna add some maple syrup, some gochugaru chili flakes, or just any chili flakes of your choice, some tomato paste, and some freshly chopped homegrown coriander. Oh, oh, oh look at this, boys. Look at this, the, the maple syrup is just caramelized around it and it's just gone really sticky and this is gonna be really meaty. If you've never used tempeh before, it's got a higher protein content than something like tofu because it's the whole bean pressed together basically and it's got a real nutty taste. Mmm, mmm, that is good. I'm gonna add some more ponzu just for that seasoning. Oh yes, this is good. This is going to be the perfect topping for that creamy curry. Talking of the curry, it's now time to add the coconut milk, some miso paste and some tahini to the pot. I cannot wait to sit down with a nice big bowl of this. Maybe a little beer in the sun. Oh, this is summer food for me. I love aromatic curries like this in the summer for sure. Oh, this is beautiful. So I'm just going to let this simmer away now. I'm not going to let it boil. I'm just going to let it lightly simmer and just let all those flavors get to know one another. 
do a little tango, a little dance. And soon we'll have a lovely curry sauce to serve up. So my greens that I want for this curry are on aisle four, I think, which is just over here. Honestly, if you've watched any of my previous videos since I moved here, I've probably expressed how much I've always wanted to have my own veg garden. So this is such an amazing achievement for me. Probably one of my proudest achievements, actually. And I've realized that I could have done it all along. I could have done it on my little balcony in London. Honestly, that's how easy it is to grow food. So I'm gonna get some chard. Yeah, let's go with this. Some lovely chard. Give it a little rinse off first. And with chard as well, which is my favorite thing about it actually, is that you can eat the stems too. And in a previous video, I did a lovely simple Indian style recipe with this. So check that out, I'll pop a link up here. And I'm just gonna saute this in the pan where I cooked my lovely tempeh. So I'm gonna put my charred stalks in the curry, saute the leaves separately, and I'm now gonna introduce my lovely peas. I'm simply just gonna get these in and let them just lightly cook, because these don't require much cooking at all. As you saw me eating them just fresh earlier, I don't wanna overcook them, so just lightly cook them for a couple of minutes just before stirring, and just before serving, I mean. And look at that, I got a bit excited, because look at the color. And what I really like about cooking the chard in the same pan as we cook the tempeh in is that's just going to sort of cling on to all the flavours that were left behind. That's it, just let it wilt down just like spinach. And I prefer the flavour of this to spinach personally. It's the same family actually, perpetual spinach and Swiss, uh, chard and beets. God, I'm learning so much these days. Now it's time to serve up. Let's get my noodles in the bowl first. I didn't realize it, but the actual peas are releasing this aroma that is so amazing. Okay, let's get this in. Plenty of those peas. Oh my God, this smells so good. my chard on top. Right, I'm gonna garnish with some toasted peanuts and also my homegrown coriander. And I've also got some Thai basil that I grew as well in my greenhouse, so I'll go and grab some of that. There we go. By the way, you'll never see me chopping herbs and putting it on top of dishes because it bruises the leaves. And I love showing off their natural beauty of the leaf itself. Anytime I mess with the shape of a natural ingredient, it bugs me a little bit. Anyway, a little bit of lime, or serve your lime on the side, and then enjoy. Right, it's time to taste this and let you know what we think of the curry, but most importantly, the peas in the curry. And I'm gonna get my brother Tom to come and taste it. Come on. Oh, let's sit on my veg patch. Oh, I should have made these taller. There you go. Oh, Thank you for filming on such a hot, warm day. Thank you for no worries. So, first up, peas. All right, here it goes, Tom. Cheers. Mm. Oh. Don't hit the spot, bro. It's so fresh. I love my chicken. I had three peas in my mouth then. And they just burst with the freshness. It's just amazing. It just, it just seems to just 
take on the aromatic flavours of the curry so well too. Maybe that's why Monge 2 and peas are in curry so often actually. So, is this a winner Tom? Uh, winner, winner chicken. Vegan chicken dinner. <laughs> there you go. Please subscribe to the channel. It means the world to us and it will continue, uh, it will make us continue being able to produce this content. That makes sense, doesn't it? You know what I mean. We've got some big ideas, as I keep saying, big major ideas actually. So please like, share and comment. Um, every like, every comment means the world to us. So please do it. And I'll see you guys soon with a new video.